Morning folks. Oh, it's a beautiful day today. Can't believe how warm it is. Feels like spring already. Taking a bucket of water for Rosa into the goat buyer for the goats to have while she finishes off milking pea. And then um, it's time to crack on with some work today. But yeah, it's gorgeous. Bird song is really loud. The sun's actually got a little bit of warmth in it. There's not a breath of wind. Beautiful and still. I can just hear Rosa's radio coming from the milking parlor. Anyway, right, better get this water in here. Hey kids. Hey Billy. Hey Billy boy. Hey Myrtle. Mandy. So a few jobs that we've still got to be getting on with is the silver pasture system that we're developing here behind the goat buyer. This is a smaller version than what we're doing in the west field, which that is another job too that we've got to be getting on with. Um, but if you watch a few of our videos back, you'll see one called silver pasture, landscaping for existing trees. And so this is the area that I'm standing in right now. And um, we probably started work on this almost a month ago but pretty much had to stop because of the snow. So there's still quite a lot of brash to pick up and um, a lot of nice pieces of wood that we want to collect to season for fuel. And I've still got to pollard and coppice nearly all of the trees that you can see around me. It's going to look quite brutal. But before we carry on with the silver pasture system for the goats, we're back in the market garden and we're carrying on with tarping some of the veg plots. So we're taking out some of the old kale stalks. Is it kale? Huh? huh? Eh. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah, <it's kale. laughs> so we're taking out these old kale stalks, pulling up the landscape fabric that we planted the kale through. The kale stalks are probably, where are we taking the kale stalks to? I mean, Myrtle likes them, but... Between the goats and the hens then? Yeah. yeah. We'll take the kale stalks to the goats to have a little bit of a chew on and we'll, we'll give some to the hens as well. Once that's done we'll pull uh, the tarp that we've got in place already over the bed so that with this heat that we're getting now, which will obviously increase considerably over the next few months, the black plastic will work its magic on the soil. landscape fabric pulled up that has uh, holes burnt in it at our kale spacing which happens to be our lettuce spacing and our chard spacing so Rose has just taken that back to where we keep the landscape fabric so as you can see we've got very little weed growth in the soil um, most of the green weeds that you can see have been growing around the base of the kale plant, the weed has been making use of the light which has been coming through the hole that we burnt in the plastic um, to plant the vegetable through. So that's really the only place, like here, here's some grass growing around a, a kale um, stalk stump. So you can see the soil is pretty soft and loose underneath the landscape fabric and that's because we do till on this farm. Um, we try our best to keep it to a minimum, um, so a low till. We're going to be experimenting with no dig quite soon by um, dedicating all our beds in the polytunnel to being a no dig system. But this hasn't been tilled this year. This was obviously just before we planted this kale crop, which is definitely over six months ago. So we try and till as little as possible, maybe only using a very shallow rotavator or tiller maybe once, just once or twice a year per bed.
Ooh, it's nice and warm in the poly tunnel. What have we got? What temperature have we got here? About 25 degrees centigrade? What's that, like 75 or something? Roasting. Anyway, why are we putting down tarps on a windy day again? Not sure, but um, yeah, definitely recommend if you're gonna do this yourself, try and wait for a day when there's not a huge amount of wind. down a few of the cabbages that are left over from last year's crop in the garden. I'm going to use them as a kind of treat to give to the goat kids because I'm going to have a go at trimming their hooves today. So I've um, got to try and convince them to stay a bit still for me. So we'll see how that goes. Can't get over what a beautiful day it is. I know, I'm boiling. It's so nice. <laughs> if it wasn't for the wind, I think we'd be catching a suntan today. <laughs> Amazing, get a little bit of sunshine and Scottish people go a bit mad. There'll be folk walking around the high street with their tops off at the moment. coming down from the market garden and saw that the postie was just driving off and he's just dropped off our garlic bulbs. I think there's some chilli seeds in here as well. Um, we've got the instruction to open immediately because there's live plants in here so. Yeah, organic gardening catalogue, that's it. We had to kind of guesstimate how many, how much to order because it did it in terms of weight, not in terms of the number of bulbs or cloves. So, you know, we'll see if it's right. Ideally, we want 900 cloves. I'm hoping we've got about that here. Looks all right, isn't it? <laughs> there we are. These are early jalapenos, so hopefully we'll get a good crop here in Scotland. I figure that's a chili that all of our customers will recognise and people like to put it. You know, you can preserve it really well um, in a brine or, you know, just have them fresh stuff them, put them on pizzas. So they're a tasty chili. We like them. over in the west field that's where they are right now they're just enjoying the sun it's a beautiful day um, I've never actually trimmed their hooves before decided not to bring them onto the stanchion uh, they've never been on the stanchion and I don't want their first memory of it to be harrowing I mean it's not gonna hurt them to trim their hooves but they won't like it because why would they um, so we're gonna do it in the west field James is gonna help me he's gonna secure them in place give them a bit of cabbage to keep them distracted keep them still and I'm going to attempt to trim their hooves.
so that was Billy done. Yay! That was very easy actually. Although I don't know if it would have been so easy without James here. Um, but yeah, they were really soft and he was actually totally distracted by the cabbage. Um, so it's great. Uh, so now it's on to Myrtle. All right, Myrtle. There you go. Good girl. You own it. Yeah, I'll just get a bit of the dirt out. Great. Well done. Ah. Well, that was so much more fussy than I thought it would be. Yeah. Well done. Great. Well done, you. <laughs> I am but a squeeze. <laughs> Nice to be able to just lie about in the field again. Nice. Really lovely weather. This is usually our most exposed field, but yeah. I think the wind's coming from the southeast today. I know. So it's actually quite sheltered in this in this one. Ready for lunch then? Yeah. Alright, let's go. Okay. So it's time to clean out the chickens again. I'm gonna give their house a pretty good clean just now. I'm gonna pull out the roosts, muck out the manure that's gathered in the bottom of their house, uh, and then I'm gonna clean out their nest boxes a little bit, as because they've accumulated quite a lot of dust and manure over the months, so we're gonna give them a bit of a clean. Okay, that's the hen house marked out. I'm gonna clean out the nest boxes now. So these nest boxes are great. They're from a company called Chickbox. They're about 10 pounds each, so not, not cheap, especially when we needed to get quite a few when we had our 50 hens at the time. But you basically just cut a hole in the wall of the chicken house and you can fit these boxes very easily. They just slot into place. But each one, each box has a perch which is actually folds up and locks in place at night time so that the, you can lock the chickens out of the nesting box to stop them from roosting in the box which of course means that they'll poop in the box and if they poop in the box you'll get shitty eggs there's um, a roll away floor so the floor of the nest box is actually sloping so when the hen lays her egg the egg naturally rolls into this collection box for us to have nice clean eggs away from the possibility of them getting 
manure on them or stepped on or cracked by mistake if the hens are sharing the box. And because everything's plastic, it means you can pull out each component and give it a good wash um, if you want to, just to make sure that the hygiene is kept up. longer job than I anticipated. The, I've got the rollaway trays all clean as you saw there. Scrubbed out the inside of the boxes that take this rollaway tray. Next thing to do is just give the little white plastic lids that fit over the egg collection box a bit of a wash. Ah, oh, you read my mind. <laughs> nice. He's scrubbing away. Kind of reached a break point. All right, that was a nice beer break. Thank you, Rosa. Sun's coming down, so this job took me a little bit longer, but um, it's good to get it done. Get to keep the hen boxes nice and clean. Just got to put them back now and put some sawdust down, and we're done. Right, here comes Rosa with some sawdust for us, which is great. Put okay, it in there, yeah. Heavy it looks. Yep. <laughs> That's the hen house taken care of, roosts back in, nice clean nest boxes. Alright folks, that's another end of the day at Taffanoff Farm. So if you like what you saw, please hit subscribe, like the video, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>